Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Friends of Bangladeshi. As you know, this is a very interesting program whereby we invite very special people. The people who we think that they have contributed for the country and the community. And today is no exception. And before I uh, introduce my guest, let's go and see a video clip. Luke Doyle visited Bangladesh in 2004. He almost knew nothing about Bangladesh. But while there, he fell in love with the country and its people. Later, he returned to Bangladesh and began a charity called Computers Are Free For Everyone. The organization offers students many computer-related courses which can improve their life. My guest today, his name is Luke Doyle. Welcome. Thank you very Welcome much. Welcome to Channel S. So tell us when you visited, when you went to Bangladesh first. So I first went to Bangladesh in 2004. Mm. Um, I joined VSO, Voluntary Service Overseas. And they sent me a placement in Silet, Bangladesh. And to be honest, I knew nothing about Bangladesh before that. So I had to look it up on the internet to even find out where it was. Um, but it seemed like such an interesting place and a really interesting job in Silet that I accepted. Where about in Silet? It was we're, um, at the NGO FIVDB, Friends in Village Development Bangladesh, in Kadim Nagar. Kadim Nagar. You went to an English medium school? And no, at that time um, I was working training teachers okay. um, in village schools. So we were visiting schools, giving teaching ideas, producing curriculum materials for English and maths and Bangla. So I had to learn some Bangla. Mm -hmm. um, and I spent months in the beginning reading children's books, trying to understand the letters and the words so I could go to school and listen to children read mm. just to have an idea of how they were doing. And you met a very interesting boy. Yes. Kabir? Kabir. Kabir. So I was um, having lunch in the staff canteen one day and someone came in, a man and his son, I didn't mm. know them, and they came in to watch the TV and it was American wrestling on the TV. But today, I was there, so the boy, Kabir, who was 11, tried to talk to me, but he didn't speak English, English, and I didn't know much Bangla in the beginning. So I thought, I'll get my laptop and try and use that to translate. So we talked through the computer, and he was fascinated by the computer. He never touched one or used one. So. I offered to his dad, maybe we can meet regularly and I can teach some English and teach some computer skills. And in return, he taught me Bangla. Right. So what happened afterwards? Did, so, you, did you stay in Silet or come back? Well, I was there for nearly three years. Okay. Um, and in that time, I was doing my job at the NGO. And in my free time, I was working with Kabir and it took a while for him to begin to speak English. Okay. For about one year, I would speak English and he would speak Bangla. In Bangla, yes. And after about a year, suddenly he started using English. And once he started, that was it. I lost my Bangla teacher. He only spoke English with me and it really took off. And it was important when I left to make sure his education continued. Okay, so he, you left after three years. Yes. And within that period, mm -hmm. you saw him, you taught him, mm -hmm. and also you got taught. Yes. Bengali, <laughs> yes. Bangla. Yes. Okay, interesting. And then you had to come back to UK? Um, well, my contract finished. Um, mm -hmm. I actually went to America okay. as a teacher, and then I moved on to China, teaching there. Um, but I always knew somewhere in the back of my mind, one day I will have to go back to Bangladesh and do something myself. Sure. But I didn't know what, but I always knew I would. Um, and you can always think, 
one day, one day, but it will never happen. Eventually, if you want it to happen, you have to it do it does now. Happen. The time will never be right if you think oh, I need to do this first or I need this much money first. Mm -hmm. You'll always delay. And I thought, I'm doing it, ready or not. I'm so going you back. returned back? Yes. When? It was 2010. 2010. Mm. I'd been visiting in between Kabir mm -hmm. and his family, um, but moved back in 2010. As a teacher? Again, as a teacher um, with a school in Dhaka, ISD, International School Dhaka. And Kabir was older by now. He was doing his A-levels. About 16, 17? Yeah, 17. Mm -hmm. um, doing his A-levels. And he came to a school in Dhaka. Um, and I knew I wanted to do something, but I didn't know what. And obviously my first thought was a school, being a teacher, but there are lots of schools, lots of NGOs setting up schools and the government has, especially in Dhaka, is very high enrollment now, especially in primary. So I mm. thought, how about something else? Something different, yes. And the something different was a computer school, just yes. focusing on computer Computers skills. Computers are free for everyone. Yes, Caf. cafe. Cafe. Computers are free for mm. everyone. Is the name of the charity, charity that we set up. So by then, your parents in the United Kingdom yes. retired. Yeah. So what yes. happened then? Well, they came to visit me, um, and they didn't really have much of an idea about cafe, the okay. school. But when they saw it and they came back to the UK, they wanted to fundraise, mm. and they started with car boot sales selling any old things they had and then they asked friends if they had anything and within a year or so they had so many donations they said as a joke we could probably open a shop which we thought charity shop yes a charity shop it was in set, bedford it's in bedford, bedford yes okay um, we thought it was a joke but then thought actually why not that will enable us to raise even more money okay so uh, as a passion again, your mm. parents yes. opened that shop, yes. started as a joke, but well. <laughs> uh, without any, they, did Suggested they take any fi financial no. uh, reward or anything? No, no, It was all not. free of Yes, yes, free of charge. yes, yeah. So for our charity, the UK side is 100% voluntary. Voluntary. No one takes a salary here. Salaries are paid to the teachers okay. in all Bangladesh. Right. What happened afterwards, after in, in, the, in Dhaka? Mm -hmm. So did it continue, your classes grew and yes. you continued there? Yeah, so we, we had like, lines of people outside the door wanting to join. So we realized there was a demand, we would have to expand. So we, we moved many times to different premises, some for to make sure it was bigger, some areas had problems. We moved in during the winter and during the monsoon. We didn't realize it was completely underwater. What no is the age there. group? So now we take children from sort of age six all the way up to early 20s. Okay. And uh, when you rented properties or rooms mm -hmm. in Dhaka, yeah. you went through a very uh, sort of difficult time? Yes. <laughs> what was it? Um, well, <laughs> ups upon, and downs, I'd say. Uh, yeah, you know, it's the same anywhere with landlords. Uh -huh. You get good landlords and landlords who are not so helpful. So we had very good landlords that were really supportive, but sometimes we outgrew the property and then we had landlords that were less supportive. And, and at times you were thrown out? Once yeah. we were thrown out, um, even though we made it clear what we were doing, the landlord said, these children are dirty thieves. Um, and thieves. he was someone standing for local election. elections. So he didn't really represent his community very well, I thought. Um, and another landlord, when we did leave, held all of our equipment to ransom in exchange for giving up the deposit that we had put Rent down. Rent deposit. Yes, yeah, so over one lakh. Mm -hmm. So we faced difficulties, difficulties. Um, but that can happen anywhere. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, viewers, we are going for a short break. Stay with us.
Welcome back. We are um, talking to Luke Doyle and very interesting subject. Uh, let's continue. So, can I call you Luke? Of course. Yes. Uh, by then, I, the boys who were five or six or mm -hmm. seven, they, are, they were growing, weren't they? Yes. Yeah, some of them grew. And yes. Mm -hmm. Did they want to start, set up something? Yes. Yeah, so, what happened was um, we did open a school in Silet. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, unfortunately, I had to leave Bangladesh. Um, and then it was very difficult for Kabir, who was now in charge, to maintain both schools. We only had a very small team. So what happened with the school in Dhaka was some of the teachers and the older students joined forces with another local NGO school and started running their computer classes with them and we left those, those original laptops from Samsung. We left for that school, we left for them, and they've continued the legacy in Dhaka, and we focused on the new school in Silet. You were saying that then you moved to Silet. Yes. Yeah. What did you do there? Where you, did you start in? Same place, Kadimnagar? Very close by, yes. Okay. So it's like coming home for me. That was where I first was introduced to Bangladesh, and that's where Kabir is from. And we were lucky to find a really supportive landlord with a wonderful building. We couldn't believe that he would let us run a school from it. Um, and he has been excellent, very, very important to uh, maintaining our school. So Kabir is now grown up. Yes. And uh, he's very experienced. Yes, yes. And what does he do now? Well, he runs the school. Mm -hmm. which involves, he takes classes, he trains teachers, he has to look for employing new teachers, dealing with all the legalities, um, and he also, we reach beyond our school and work with partners. And he's been to USA, he was yes. invited by Microsoft, yes, and yes. in UK? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he's had several trips to the UK, mm -hmm. Has met our donors and spoken to groups such as Rotary clubs and Lion clubs and church groups and schools. Mm -hmm. So he's tell, done that. tell us about Sisimpur, the, the branch of Sisim Street. Yeah, so probably a lot of people will be familiar with Sisimpur, um, with their TV shows and educational content. Um, originally from the USA, Sesame Street. Um, mm. And in Bangladesh, we got to know them. We were introduced by a friend of ours, an American um, called Stephen Jenks. He introduced us to Sisimpur. And we have been doing some work for them. So, cafe students. Interesting. You said work yes. for them. What work? So, as well as we obviously receive donations, but our long-term goal is to be self-sufficient through the work that our students and teachers can do. So because they can make apps and websites and they can they do can graphic make, design. What did you say? Apps yeah. and websites? Mobile apps. These young websites. kids? Not the five-year-olds. Not the five-year-olds. Uh, but even, 18, even then, yeah. they had no future then because they came from underprivileged yeah, that community. Was, that's, yeah, that's, that's why we amazing. started. So amazing. now to prove that they can do it, we want them to do real work, not just a class project, okay. but find real work. So Sissimpore has given us two apps to make, a website um, and some animation and recording for some of their existing online games. Games? Yes, okay. educational games. Okay, that's interesting. So the uh -huh. students get to work on that, the students get paid and then we use the other money to go back into the school to run our program. Um, and that's the future for us, is Fantastic. running more as a social enterprise. So we can't offer a degree to our students, we're not a university, but we can give them a real portfolio of work that they can go out to an employer and say, I made this project for a client in the US, um, I worked on Sysimpore project here, or I've done this website. And that's real work that they can share. So, you know, what we have learned 
is going to be very interesting for our community as well because we have a lot of businesses mm -hmm. and here it's very expensive yeah and if we use these yes. facilities mm -hmm. and let the young boys and girls yes. do the website or yeah. apps mm -hmm. and with um, far less cost yes i think it will be very interesting yes. and people should uh, take up on that yeah yes it's a good mm. opportunity to know you get your work done but you're also really contributing okay. i w just wanted to ask when i was talking to you b before um there you had some difficulty with uh, visas mm -hmm. and do you still have that problem um well for a long time i was able to stay in bangladesh and get a six month visa and renew and then suddenly i came back to the uk to renew as usual and something had changed in the process it's i think because when i was in bangladesh so after i left my job and we focused on the school i was just there as a volunteer so i wasn't employed officially because i wasn't taking a salary in bangladesh and i think there was no real visa category for someone that just wants to be there at their own expense. Um, and I was unable to get any long-term visa. So that means each time you go, mm. you have to take a visa. Yes. And that's for a short period. Yes. Yeah. But you would like to spend more time um, because the beneficiary would be the deprived uh, children, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, so I think yeah. that's something for the our um, High Commission could look into and the government. So you went in 2004 and now it's 2018, mm -hmm. over 14 years. Mm -hmm. What changes have you seen and uh, witnessed in Bangladesh? Well, the obvious ones, especially in our field, is the technology. Yeah. Um, if those changes hadn't happened with the infrastructure, especially the mobile phone network, what we do would be impossible. So that's the most obvious one. Um, and just in terms of, you know, a lot of things still very similar to when I was first there, especially mm. in the select area. Um, you don't really need to think you know, some of the fundamentals in terms of the culture and the people don't really need to change. But as the infrastructure improves, it makes people's lives easier. So I think there was the new road was put in from Dhaka to Silet. The first time I traveled by road, it went a very long way round through tea gardens. Can you just say one or two things in Bengali? But at least you have tried and you communicated, <laughs> you, you know. Uh, that's very interesting and we are proud of you you know well, I proud of a friend <laughs> yeah yeah and um, i mean your parents have played a vital part as well yes they Do, are they, they still doing uh, yes they they, got, they yeah. should be here they they could be here too they are friends of bangladesh okay in the fact that they have given up their comfortable retirement to take on what's like a full-time job of working in the shop and they collect goods and they deliver goods and doing all the paperwork side of they basically running a business even though it's a charity and they didn't have to do that mm -hmm. and they they do visit bangladesh yeah, as that's well very interesting time I think to time we should we ought to have them as well yeah um, now tell us um, something to our viewers the community mm -hmm. you know because you are a inspiration no doubt about it and Bangladeshi people are really hospitable mm -hmm. they want to do things yes. especially the community mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom and um, what is your you know prescription I would say <laughs> you know the secret uh, you can advise to the community well for me it comes it goes way back to the beginning when i was being trained by vso the philosophy was very much against turning up in a country and prescribing western ideas or values that's not going to work so whatever help should be something the community wants so i saw from kabir that just learning to use a computer and learning english completely changed his life. Yeah. 
Yes. And it's really from him that he wanted to give that opportunity True. to more people. And when we started in a small way and saw the demand, we knew this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. If we kept trying to impose, maybe if it had been 10 years before, the time would have been wrong. Mm -hmm. And I do hear from people that have tried projects in places and it's fine when you go and you set it so up. So the secret is some, do something different. Do something well, the this community This is what I think, you know, your secret was to do something different and you have been successful and wish, wish you all the best. Channel S and the community will be very supportive to you. Viewers, uh, we had a very interesting conversation with Luke Doyle. He has been a friend of Bangladesh. So is his parents. And thank you very much for coming to the studio and your time. And um, I have to tell many people about this challenging job mm -hmm. you took and you succeeded. Thank you so much. Thank you very thank much you. for having me. Viewers, we had a very interesting conversation with uh, Luke Doyle. Very, very interesting. And um, soon we'll be back with another interesting person, a friend of the community, the country, and um, the community as a whole. Thank you for watching. Stay with Channel S. We'll be back soon.